I don't know about you, but I am loving this series of brainstem reflex videos because it's really getting, letting me get into the nitty gritty and I'm just reading so much, it's great. Um, today, we're gonna talk about the pupillary light reflex. This is when uh, bright light enters your eye and your pupil constricts as a reflex response to limit the amount of light going to your retina. This is part of the mechanism um, adjusting how much light falls on the retina, right? And uh, I've done a series of videos where we've looked at the anatomy of the eye in detail from lots of different perspectives before because there's a lot of anatomy in the eye. This time, this is giving us uh, an opportunity to delve even more deeply and we'll be looking at the reflex as a whole. So the afferent part, the sensory part, the midbrain, reflex, so the nuclei in there, how the afferent fibers get in, where the, where the reflex actually is, and then the efferent part, the parasympathetic motor part that then goes back to the eye and triggers the uh, smooth muscle to contract. I like this sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does. Here is the eye. Uh, if I open up the eye and take it apart, we can see the, oh, lots of things. We can see the retina. So back here is the retina. I'm sure you're aware that the retina is the light detecting part of the eye, right? The retina is made up of light detecting cells. Did you know, because none of us did for quite a long time, did you know that in addition to the rods and cones, which are the light detecting cells which we use for vision, there are also cells in here that just detect light, the intensity of light, and they have a different purpose or different purposes. These cells are called the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, which sounds like a very long name, but it's a very sensible name. Uh, there are multiple layers to the retina. These are cells in the retinal ganglion layer and they are intrinsically photosensitive. Um, so that's our um, sensory structure within the retina and the afferent nerve is gonna be the optic nerve. So just like the rest of the sensory information from the retina, um, those intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells will send action potentials along the optic nerve. But the left and right optic nerves from the left and right eyes cross, don't they? The optic nerve will pass through the optic canal and get into the cranial cavity. And here we find the optic chiasm. The left and right optic nerves meet, combine, cross over. And here we are on the brain. So here and here we can see the olfactory nerves, cranial nerves one, and we number the cranial nerves in descending order. So the optic nerves are cranial nerve two. Uh, we can only see one, but that's the optic nerve there and that is the optic chiasm. And in terms of vision, um, different regions of the retina cross over from side to side. In terms of um, those intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, the cells on the nasal side of the retina cross to the other side of the body. They're the neurons cross to the other side of the body, uh, whereas the uh, the, the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells on the temporal side of the retina stay on this side of the body. They stay on the same side, they don't cross over. So we have light entering the eye, triggering these cells. Some of those cells cross to the other side of the body and some of them do not. Mm -hmm. Now, down here we have the brain stems. We have the spinal cord coming to the medulla oblongata and the pons and then the midbrain. And the midbrain is then linking the brain stem to the higher centers, the higher parts of the brain. And I said that the reflex is in the midbrain. So how do these neurons carrying this light information get to the midbrain? 
Um, and this is kind of the tricky bit, but it's a good bit. Um, right, let me just split this in half. Um, and we can see the optic nerve coming in here. Uh, we changed the name of the optic nerve. It's a bundle of neurons, right? But a nerve is a structure in the peripheral nervous system. Uh, a tract is a bundle of fibers in the central nervous system. So we changed the name of the optic nerve to the optic tract and it runs around here. Now, in terms of vision, those fibers from the rods and the cones are gonna to run to the lateral geniculate nucleus and they're then gonna travel as radiations to the, the visual cortex back here. That is not part of the pupillary light response or pupillary light reflex. And what we see here is we see that visual tract, oh, it runs around here and it goes Exactly where I said it was going to go is it's going to the midbrain. But more interestingly than that, um, on the midbrain, posteriorly, so on the dorsal surface of the midbrain, we have two lumps. These are the colliculi. There's a superior colliculus and an inferior colliculus, and there's one on the left and there's one on the right. And essentially, that's where the fibers are going to. The, the, these little hills, these little colliculi, so there are four in total, so they get the beautiful named the corpora quadrigemina, the four twinned bodies. But the superior colliculi are involved in reflexes associated with vision or light, and the inferior colliculi are associated with reflex involved with the auditory system. You hear a loud bang, you instinctively turn towards it, that's the inferior colliculus. You see something in the corner of your eye, you turn towards it, that's the superior colliculus. So that, is where our fibers are going to. So our light sensing fibers, those intrinsically photosensitive uh, retinal ganglion cells, send that information. So there's light coming into the eye. They send that information around the optic nerve. Some of them cross in the optic chiasm, some of them don't. They continue around in the optic tract and they get to the midbrain. They enter the midbrain at the superior colliculus. And there's a little bit more we need to know if I turn this around, we're now looking at a mid-sagittal section, we're looking in the midline. There's the medulla oblongata, there's the pons. So this is part of the midbrain. The midbrain kind of does kind of does that. But in here we can see a tube, that's the cerebral aqueduct. And in there is a cerebrospinal fluid passing through the ventricular system. Now, this part of the midbrain here, the the region of the midbrain dorsal to the cerebral aqueduct gets called the tectum. That's where we're finding the, 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 the colliculi. The superior colliculus then is a tectal structure. It's in the tectum. And in the tectum here, this is where we're finding those visual reflexes. There are a number of nuclei in here. What they all do, what they all connect to is still something that's being worked on. If the colliculi are in the tectum um, and the cerebral aqueduct is right in the middle, then a little bit laterally to the cerebral aqueduct, a little bit laterally to the periaqueductal gray, if you know your brainstem sections, um, there are nuclei just before the tectum. So these are the pretectal nuclei. There are a number of pretectal nuclei. Um, they are involved in visual reflexes. We will talk more about them in the future in different reflexes. Um, but the, the one we're interested in today is the olivary nucleus. Let's call it the olivary pretectal nucleus. So we're clear which olivary nucleus we're talking about. We're not gonna confuse it with other things. So those, that light sensing information coming from those um, retinal ganglion cells takes that route and it's entering the midbrain at the olivary pretectal nucleus. And there's one on either side. So that is the complete afferent limb. That is the complete sensory part of this reflex. The Edinger Westphal, or Westphal, Westphal, German, right? The Edinger Westphal nucleus is nearby. Um, it is anterior to 
the cerebral aqueduct, but it's very, very nearby. The Edinger Westphal nucleus is considered to be the cell bodies of the parasympathetic neurons that are going to go to the eye. And constriction of the pupil is a parasympathetic nervous system mediated event. So we're almost there. Now, you've got light going into an eye and sensors detect that light and some of those neurons cross the other side and some of the neurons stay on the same side and they run, let's say, so they run to the olivary pretectal nucleus on one side. That olivary pretectal nucleus on one side will then send out projections to both Edinger Westphal nuclei on both sides. So both sides are connected at two points. Um, the Edinger Westphal nucleus, this is the efferent limb, this is the motor limb of the reflex. And in response to that stimulus of light and action potentials and this reflex being activated, those uh, preganglionic parasympathetic nuclei in the Edinger Westphal nucleus will send out action potentials. And they are part of the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three. So the oculomotor nerve is the nerve that's going to run to the eye and innervate most of the muscles in the eye. Um, the, the Edinger Westphal nucleus is a part of that, it's the parasympathetic part. This nucleus was discovered in the late 1800s by Edinger and Westphal in the fetus and the adult, a couple of years apart. And only recently have we found that actually there is more than one nucleus on either side and some of those cells are not involved in this job and they're connected to many other parts of the brain and they have other jobs to do. But most people think of the Edinger Westphal nucleus as the parasympathetic innovation to the eye, right? Okay, so um, cranial nerve three, is going to form and it's going to leave uh, the midbrain and it's going to run across the floor of the middle cranial fossa and leave the cranial cavity through the superior orbital fissure and enter the orbit. Now, I said these were preganglionic parasympathetic fibers. That's because um, that's how parasympathetic neurons are organized. There is a neuron leaving the central nervous system, and then it meets a second neuron which goes to the target structure. Um, a nucleus in the central nervous system is a collection of neuronal cell bodies which then send out axons. A collection of neuronal cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system is called a ganglion. So in the eye we have the ciliary ganglion. So those preganglionic parasympathetic neurons coming from the Edinger Westphal nucleus running with cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve, those particular fibers will run to the ciliary ganglion. I have a ciliary ganglion, big eye. There it is, there's the ciliary ganglion. So the purpose of the ciliary ganglion is um, that's where the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons start. So they carry the action potential from the preganglionic parasympathetic neurons and then the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons will run from the ciliary ganglion through the short lit ciliary nerves to enter the eye, pass around the eye to the sphincter pupillae muscle. Oh. The sphincter pupillae muscle or iris sphincter muscle or pupillary sphincter muscle or variations thereof. Sphincter pupillary muscle is a sphincter. It's a ring of smooth muscle fibers. The pupil, of course, is just a hole. It's a gap, it's a gap that light passes through. Uh, and the iris is the colored bit around the pupil. And there's the sphincter pupillary muscle then, um, those postganglionic parasympathetic neurons will innervate these smooth muscles, and this is an M3 muscarinic um, acetylcholine mediated uh, synapse. So the parasympathetic innervation will cause the sphincter pupillary muscle to contract, which will make the pupil smaller, will cause pupillary constriction. That is the whole reflex. This then is a useful clinical test. In a dark room, um, 
if you shine a light in an eye, in one eye, the response should be that the pupils of both eye constrict. Um, the pupil constricts in the eye that you shine the light into, that's a direct response. The pupil in the other eye, not the one you shine the light into, but the other eye, that's a consensual response. So that's the normal response. As you shine a light into one eye, both pupils will constrict. constrict. Um, okay, so the, the afferent limb of that, the sensory limb of that is the optic nerve, optic chiasm, optic tract, also the retina, the olivary pretectal nucleus. The, the, brain, the midbrain is where all this is happening, so that's where the reflex is. And the efferent limb, the motor limb, is from the Edinger-Westphal nucleus. It's the parasympathetic fibres in oculomotor nerve, in cranial nerve three. Now you've got the anatomy and you've got the wiring, you can apply logic to work out what's happening when you test this reflex and it doesn't behave as you would expect. All right, so you're in a dark room and the eyes have adjusted to the room and they're dilated. Uh, you shine a light into the right eye and both pupils constrict. Good. And then you shine the light into the left eye and both pupils dilate again. They don't constrict. That means that the afferent limb, the sensory part in the right eye, that works fine. The sensory part of the left eye isn't working because it didn't detect that light that was entering the eye. But when you tested the right eye, the motor part worked, the efferent part for both eyes worked. You had a direct and consensual response, right? Does that make sense? So when you tested the right eye, the sensory bit worked, triggered the reflex, which triggered the motor parts of both eyes. But then when you shone light into the left eye, the sensory bit didn't work, the afferent bit, so then the motor bit wasn't triggered. So then the injury is in, or the lesion, the problem is in the retina, the optic nerve, the optic tract, the brainstem, right? What about if you shine a light into the right eye and the pupil in the right eye constricts, but the left eye doesn't? And then you shine a light into the left eye and the pupil in the right eye constricts, but the left eye doesn't. Well, the sensory bit of that side and the sensory bit of that side both work. So the optic nerve and tract and what have you, that's intact. But the side that didn't constrict, the efferent part of the reflex, the motor part of the reflex isn't working properly. So we're thinking the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three the Edinger-Westphal nucleus. And there are variations on this, but if you understand the reflex, if you understand how it's supposed to work, if you understand that direct and consensual response, you can work all of this out. That's why the anatomy of these reflexes is so important. But that's quite cool, isn't it? So um, the pupillary light response is a reflex of the midbrain. The sensory part is in the retina and the optic nerve and tract. Uh, going to the olivary pretectal nucleus, which triggers the Edinger-Westphal nuclei on both sides to send parasympathetic innervation through the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three, and the ciliary ganglion to the sphincter pupillae muscle to cause the pupils to constrict and limit the amount of light entering the, lie, the eye so that it's just right. All right, cool bit of anatomy. I hope that was as interesting for you as it was for me, probably not. <laughs> See you next week.